Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to a great day of learning. We are your teachers today. I'm Miss Stephanie. And I'm Miss Bernita. We're so glad to be with you today for tons of fun, reading, and knowledge. We have some learning goals for our time together today. We will be discussing reading a story about some goats and a troll. We will then discuss the plot and the setting of the story. Our focus standards today are RLK2 and LK4. That's right. The goats and trolls are the characters. Let's think back to what we've learned about characters. Characters are the people or animals that a story is about. The setting of a story is the place where the story happens and when the story happens. The story you will hear today takes place on a bridge next to a grassy hill in the daytime. Since the setting is on a bridge next to a grassy hill, we know that the setting is inside or outside. Of course, that's outside. Think about what we know about a bridge. A bridge connects two pieces of land that are separated by something that's not easy to cross, like water or a busy road. True. I've been across some bridges that creaked when I went across them. Miss Bernita, I'm so glad you brought up brought that up. Creaked is one of our vocabulary words. Ah, we do need to learn about our critical vocabulary. So creak is a perfect word to start on. So friends, you see behind us, we have a bridge for our vocabulary words today. We will cross the bridge and make match the words and their definitions, our meanings. So let's start with creaked. So creaked means a low squeaking sound. I could say the door creaked when I opened it. So. Creaked is our motion for our word. Miss Bernita, you want to review it? Let's do the motion to help us remember. Creaked. Creaked. Perfect. So scholars, what's the word that we meet that made a low squeaking sound? That's right. I heard you. Creaked. While Miss Stephanie takes the definition of creep, Miss Barnes already, Miss Bernita already did it, and put it over to our, let's go to our next word. It is longed. Longed means had an earnest, heartfelt desire, especially for something beyond reach. I could say we longed for cold water in the summer heat. Let's do this motion for longed. If you long for something, you really want that something very badly. Say longed. Now do the motion with me. Longed. So we're going to take longed across the bridge. Longed had an earnest, heartfelt desire for something, especially something beyond reach. Longed. Next, we see the word is gobble. It's a verb, and it means to eat something very quickly and in a greedy way. For example, Akilah's mother told her not to gobble her food, but to take time to chew each bite. Say gobble. And let's do this motion. So say it again. Gobble. Great work. That means to eat quick and greedy. There you go, gobble. All right, friends, gobble, to eat something in a quick or greedy way. Friends, our very last word to take across the bridge is scarcely. Scarcely means only just barely by a small 
amount. Here's how I can use scarcely in a sentence. We scarcely made it in time to catch our bus. Woo! That's happened to me before. I scarcely made it to the bus one time and long for the rest of the day after I learned I was so tired after I ran to that bus. So let's take scarcely across the bridge. Woo, only barely just enough time. Our board wants to fall on us. Oh, Miss Stephanie, I like how you use two of our vocabulary words to tell us your story. So friends, what means only just barely? That's it, scarcely. Let's go over all of our words. I'll point to a picture and you tell us what the word is. What's that word? Crete. What's this word? Longed, that's right. What about gobble? You can say it, gobble, do the motion. And then our last one is scarcely. That's right, boys and girls. Miss Stephanie, I know how much you and I love playing games. Oh, you got that right. What are you thinking about over there, Miss Bernita? I'm thinking we should play I spy with our critical vocabulary words. I must say, I played. I spy before, but never with vocabulary words. How are we going to play this? I will give you and the scholars at home some I spy clues. You will use the clues to determine which word I am spying. Okay, okay. I got it. Friends, how about you? Are you ready? I think they are. Let's get our, get our first round going. All right. I spy with my little eye something that means to want something badly that is beyond reach. Hmm, to want something badly that's beyond reach. What are your friends, what do you think, friends? Ah, I heard it, longed. Woo. I spy longed. You were so fast. Miss Bernita got ahead of me. I didn't know what was going on. Our word was long. All right, next one, Miss Bernita, we're ready. All right, I spy with my little eye something that means made a low squeaking sound. Okay, I've got this one and that one is, they beat you to it. I already heard the word, creeped. That's exactly what I was going to say. Crete made the low squeaking sound. Yes, yes it does. But you've got to be faster than that, Miss Stephanie. Ready for the next one? I'm ready, I'm ready. Okay. I spy with my little eye something that means to eat in a quick and greedy way. I've got it, gobble. I'm ready, I got well, it. Well, that you were. I spy gobbled, and it means to eat something in a quick, quick and greedy way. All right, I've got one more. I spy with my little eye something that means only just barely a small amount. I'm thinking it is too late. Is it too late? I've already heard one of our friends at home say, scarcely, that's what I spy. Wow, you guys and girls were experts with vocabulary words. I'll say, now that we are vocabulary scholars, we move into today's story. You are about to hear a story in which three goats long for something or want something very badly, but run into a problem trying to get what they want. Listen carefully to find out what the goats want what the problem they encounter is, and how they solve the problem. 
Now that we've set the purpose for our reading, let's read our story. The Three Billy Goats Gruff. Once upon a time, there were three Billy Goat brothers who were all named Gruff. The three Billy Goats Gruff longed to go up a hillside covered with thick green grass. They wanted to eat that grass because they knew it would be delicious. To get to the hillside, they had to cross a brook. Over the brook was a bridge, and under the bridge lived a troll. Now the first to cross the bridge was the little billy goat gruff. Here, the word cross means to go from one side of the bridge to the other. The word cross can have another meaning. The word cross also means to be annoyed or angry. Trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap went the bridge. Who's that trip trapping over my bridge? roared the troll, who had been taking a nap and was feeling quite grumpy from the shook away from being shook awake by trip trapping over the bridge. And the tiny goat said in a wee small voice, It is only I, little Billy Goat Gruff, and I'm going to the hillside to eat some delicious grass. Oh no said the troll, who was feeling both grumpy and hungry. I'm coming to gobble you up. Gobble means to eat something very quickly. Oh, please don't eat me, said little Billy Goat Gruff. I'm too little. Yes, I am. Wait a bit until my brother come. He's much bigger. Well, be off with you, said the troll, who was usually much more polite when his tummy was full and he had a decent nap, he settled back down under the bridge, determined to fall back asleep. Soon, the middle billy goat gruff came to cross the bridge. Trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap, went the bridge. Who's that trip trapping over my bridge? roared the troll, jumping into the bridge. Now the troll was becoming very grumpy. How was he to get any sleep with all that noise moving over the bridge? And the goat said in a not so small voice, It is I, Middle Billy Goat Gruff, and I'm going to the hillside to eat the delicious grass. Oh no, said the troll, who was feeling even grumpier and hungrier. I'm coming to gobble you up. Oh no, don't eat me. Wait till my brother comes along. He's much bigger. Very well. Be off with you, said the troll, who could not believe he had been disturbed twice in one day. He jumped back down to try once more to take a nap in his home under the bridge. The troll cannot sleep because the goats were walking noisily on his house. And just then, up came the great big billy goat gruff. Trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap, went the bridge, for the big billy goat gruff was heavy and the bridge creaked and groaned under him. That means the bridge moved and made a squeaking sound because the big billy goat gruff was so big. Who's that trip trapping over my bridge, roared the troll. For this was really quite ridiculous. And a deep, loud voice boomed. It is I, Big Billy Goat Gruff. Oh no, said the troll, who was thinking now that he was feeling the grumpiest and the hungriest he had ever felt. I'm coming to gobble you up. Well then... Come and try it, said the big billy goat gruff. The troll climbed up on the bridge, but he was not prepared for what was happening next. What do you think will happen now between the troll and the big billy goat gruff? The big billy goat gruff rushed at the troll without saying a word. 
He danced and pranced all over until the bridge shook so much that the poor troll rolled off the bridge into the water. Then the big billy goat gruff went to the hillside where he joined his brothers and they all three ate so much delicious grass that they were scarcely able to walk home again. Snip, snap, snip, snap, this tale's told out. What an interesting story. Now that we've heard it, let's work with you for a few questions about the story. Remember when we ask you the questions and you have to answer them in a complete sentence. Here's our first question. How many Billy Goats Gruffs are there? There you go. There are three Billy Goats Gruffs. Great work. What are their names? I heard you. Their names are Little Billy Goat Gruff, Middle Billy Goat Gruff, and Big Billy Goat Gruff. Now, Think back to what we discussed earlier about the setting. What is the setting? Nice recall. The setting is where and when the story happens. So what is the setting to this story? You've got it. The setting of the story is a bridge near a grassy hill. Great work, scholars. Who lives under the bridge? Good thinking, the troll lives under the bridge. What is the troll trying to do when the little billy goat grub crosses over the bridge? You knew it, the troll is trying to take a nap. What problem does little billy goat gruff encounter when he wakes up the troll? Eek! The troll yells and says he is going to gobble up the little billy goat gruff. But why doesn't the troll gobble him up? Aha! Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Little billy goat gruff said his brother was coming who's bigger. So the troll decided to wait. Now, who crosses the bridge next? Middle Billy Goat Gruff crosses the bridge next. Why doesn't the troll try to gobble up Middle Billy Goat Gruff? I heard you. The troll doesn't try to gobble up him because Middle, middle Billy... Oh, boys and girls, that is a tongue twister. Whew. Middle Billy Goat Gruff says his big brother is coming. So... Who crosses the bridge last? That's it. Big Billy Goat Grub crosses the bridge last. What happens? Great thinking. The troll says that he will gobble him up, but Big Billy Goat Grub knocks the troll into the water. Amazing work, scholars. So, does the story end the way you expected it? How might the troll feel at the end? Interesting ideas. Miss Stephanie, unfortunately, our time is almost up today. Before we go, though, you told me we started today that you, when we started today, that you wanted to close out with some final work with some of the words we heard in our story. That's exactly right. Thanks for the reminder. In the read aloud, you heard to get to the hillside, they had to cross a brook. So here, the word cross means to go over something. So we're going to match, put our definition up here because cross can mean to go over something. Cross also can mean other things. It also means annoyed or irritable. So we know that our troll was annoyed and irritable trying to take his nap. So for us, 
Our second definition of the word cross is annoyed or irritable. So I'm going to put that right there. So today we heard a word that had how many definitions? That's right, two definitions. Great plan. So one finger like this means to go over something and two fingers like this means annoyed or irritable. All right, so we're going to play with our definitions of our words. So if it's cross to go over something, hold up a one. If it's annoyed or irritable, hold up two. So I, listen to the circumstance, I need to cross the street to get to work. Is that meaning one or is that meaning two? Great thinking. You should be holding up one finger for meaning one to go over something. How about this one? I watched the horse cross from one pasture to another. Ah, uh, yes. That means is meaning one as well. How about this? My mom was cross with me when she saw I had not cleaned up the mess in my room. There you go. Meaning two, irritated or annoyed. Let's do one more quickly. The sisters became cross when we couldn't agree on the name for the puppy. You knew it, meaning two. Let's move on to one more word we heard in our read aloud about the three billy goats scrub. Yes, think back to the word longed. Longed, at the beginning of our time together, we learned that the word meant an earnest heartfelt desire, especially for something beyond reach. When you have longed for something or longed to do something, it means what? You have really, really wanted something or you have really, really wanted to do something. So for example, Rihanna longed to swim in the pool to find relief from the hot sun. What's something you've longed for? Interesting. Now I'm going to ask you some questions about what you might long for in different situations. When you answer Miss Stephanie's question, be sure to begin your response with, I have longed for. What have you longed for on a hot summer day? Great ideas. I heard I have longed for popsicles, I have longed for a cool drink, and I have longed for some cooler weather. What have you longed for on those really cold days? Ah, of course, I have heard someone say I've longed for rain to stop quickly because it's cold outside. Why would rain and it's cold? That doesn't make sense. I don't know. Maybe I've longed for the sun to come out so I could play. There Ooh, you go. I think I'm tired, Miss Stephanie. I think I am too. Friends, what an amazing work done, you've done today. As far as we've learned, We've learned about characters, setting, read our story, and discussed some things we have longed for. Yes, we have all had a wonderful time with you all today, boys and girls. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Yes, please join us again and continue to explore more stories, events, and characters. Thank you for doing your best today, and be sure to share something you learned today with someone at your home. All rights and credits for today's lesson belong to Core Knowledge Language Art. We would like to thank them for publicly sharing these valuable resources. The views and opinions expressed in this lesson are those of Core Knowledge authors and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or positions of the Mississippi Department of Education. Thank you for joining us today, boys and girls. We will see you next time.